I will now show you the annual maintenance and troubleshooting procedure. Before you disassemble the main valve, you need to remove your nose assembly as shown in the weekly maintenance video. The first step is to make sure you have your basic toolkit ready. These items include your needle nose pliers, your adjustable shifter, your basic Allen key set, your open-ended spanner, and your O-ring lubrication. Before we disassemble the main valve, we need to remove the hanger bracket. This is done by removing the two Allen key screws on the body and the rear screw at the back. Using the number eight Allen key, 5 16 Allen key, and then remove the side screws. bolt is removed using the 3 quarter or 90 mil spanner and the shifter. The bracket can be now just set aside, ready for reassembly. Using the 3 16 Allen key, we then undo the top cap. Carefully remove the valve body, making sure none of the O-rings have stuck to any of this surface. And set it aside for, for a minute. We now check the small O-ring here and the large O-ring that it's not been deformed or damaged or come out of its groove. We can take the cylinder out, it's out of sliding it out. We're checking for any damage, any expansion, cracking or wear to the cylinder. This is the cylinder seal. To remove it, it's just a matter of pushing it over the edge, getting your finger underneath it and popping it off. We're checking for any wear and splitting around this edge. It's simply just a matter of sliding it back on, like so. Using a small amount of your O-ring lubrication, just around the surface. Smearing it over so it's got an even coating. Placing it back into the position, sliding it in and clicking it into position. We can now set this aside to allow us to work on the main valve. It's a matter of removing the orange cap. The four screws go with it as well. We check it for any cracking or damage. Let me put it aside and we replace it as required. We now we're going to remove the valve inside by the use of removing this lock screw, the lock nut, and the screw inside. So using the 964th Allen key and your pointy nose pliers, we grip hold of the lock nut. And using the Allen key, There's our lock nut and its washer. It's then a matter of continuing to unscrew the screw at the front. We can now remove this whole assembly. What we're inspecting is any nicks or damage or dents on this main valve, that the O-rings are in good condition and have plenty of lubrication on them. If we need to, we can re-lubricate them when we, after we've cleaned them up. They can be set aside for a moment. We're checking also the, the spring inside. 
It is in good condition, it's not split or damaged. And it is placed in the correct orientation. It needs to be tapered up. And just sit it back inside. Once we've inspected this, we put the O-ring lubrication on it and very carefully slide it back into position, making sure that the O-ring fits in its inside and doesn't get pinched around the outside. We can put it back into place. It's a matter of relocating the screw. And we place the washer carefully on the back with the lock nut. Again, holding it with the pliers, doing it up with the Allen key. making sure there's no movement side to side, but we can still move the valve up and down correctly. We now flip it over, and we undo these two cap screws to remove the trigger valve with a quarter inch Allen key. It's just a matter of undoing these Removing the locks, bolts, the angle plate, we need to inspect it and make sure it's not damaged. Sit it aside. We have then a large O-ring on the top, along with a plunger and a spring and a small O-ring. These items are all replaceable and all the spare parts. They are worn or damaged. Also down inside we have a small O-ring as well. Need to very carefully get it out with a small Allen key. Just needs to carefully be brought out so it can be inspected and make sure it's not damaged and is in position correctly. If that is all okay, it can go back into its place and using the end of the Allen key, just push it down and make sure it's sitting flat inside the hole. And it's a matter of getting the spring, make sure the spring is in good condition, not broken or compressed. And place it in the hole at the end, a small amount of lubrication on the the O-ring, keep it in place, very sparingly, apply it to the O-ring, small amount in there to keep the spring in place if necessary, it's a matter of then carefully sliding it into position, making sure it works. Bring the large O-ring on top, like so, and the angle plate sits back on as well. And tightening down the bolts evenly. Just hand tight. We now can now replace the orange cap. And making sure that little O-ring hasn't fallen out. You can use a small amount of the O-ring lubrication to stick it into its position and it will then hold. matter of carefully aligning the hole in here with the hole there. 
placing it over the top, making sure that the screws have started in the threads. Then again, bring them down evenly, firming them all down. Make sure the tension is even. We then check around this seam to make sure none of the O-ring has popped out. If it has, it's a matter of undoing the screws, lifting it off, repositioning it, putting it back down and re-tightening it up again. We can now put the hanger bracket back on. Maybe easy to put the top bolt in first. And then each of the side bolts. They should be firmed up tight. as well as the rear bolt with the spanners. And now we can reattach the nose assembly as shown in the weekly maintenance video.